Hello, this is LJ Boffel, and this is a video for Microsoft Excel. And I want to show you some basics about how formulas work in Microsoft Excel. We're not actually going to do a bunch of formulas. We're going to go over some basic information about how they work in order to help set you up properly for when you start working with them. Now, formulas and functions are the same thing, except the function is a pre-created formula that Microsoft um, creates on behalf of a variety of different types of, of functions that are needed, whether it's statistical or financial or scientific, etc. But basically, they are formulas as well as just regular formulas that you can create by hand. So how do formulas work in Excel? Basically, um, first, let's think about them. A formula is you asking Excel to give you an answer to a question using usually numbers. I say usually because there's a caveat to this, but usually numbers. So if you want the answer of what 2 plus 3 equals, it equals 5. So the idea is you're asking Excel to give you the answer to that question, or you're asking it to give you the answer to the question of um, what is equal what is the equals of, say, 3 times 4 and that particular quantity plus 5? And formulas can get longer and more interesting and do a whole variety of things in Excel, which we will learn about over several videos and exercises. But in the end, all a formula is about is a calculation to tell, have Excel tell you what something equals. Now, formulas can be written inside of a cell like this. You could just actually type in a formula equals 3 times 7 and that's what you get. Or you can actually, and you notice here we're going to take a look now at the formula bar and a couple of components that work with the formula bar. So this is actually an, typed in the cell uh, formula and inside the formula bar you could see the actual formula itself. Now I could delete this and then I could come here and place my cursor, cursor anywhere, select any cell, and then type inside the formula bar itself. Equals 5 divided by 2, and then I get an example here. And this isn't really a very great one because I've only got a couple of decimal points on that. So I could go to the Home tab and then I could add more decimal points. 5 divided by 2? Oh, yes, yeah, 5, and yeah, as opposed to 5 minus 2, which would be 3, right? So, but anyway, this is using the formula bar to do the same thing. Now, I'm going to make a change to this formula, and this is where we want to pay attention. See this X and this check mark? The X means that if you make a change in a formula, like you accidentally twitch and you click into an existing formula and you don't want it, change it, you would click the X to get out of it unchanged. If you like the formula, you usually get to type the formula and hit enter on your keyboard. But you also could click this green check mark. So say I'm going to come over here and I'm going to change this to 85 divided by 2. I could click this green check mark and that will act the same way as hitting enter. Or I could come in here and say, well, let's do 86 divided by 2. No, I've changed my mind. I can come over to this little X, which turns red when I hover over it, and I can click that, and I will exit the formula bar without changing the formula. So that's a really important thing to know, because if you end up with a whole worksheet full of formulas, inevitably, and this happens to me all the time, your hand might twitch or something startles you, and you suddenly jump from a formula you're working on into another cell, and then it tries to like add something that is not what you wanted. So I could immediately come over and click this little red, um, when I'm in the formula, I can click this little red thing and say, no, I didn't want that. So that's a really t helpful tip. So that's about the for uh, formula bar, the X, and the check mark. Now, another thing that's worth knowing about is, it, it, it's very important actually, is the function library. That's the library of a whole bunch of formulas that Excel has pre-created for you. And you can access it in more than one way. The, one of the easiest ways is this little insert function symbol here that looks like a little FX. And that, you open that, you click it, and you get an insert function panel. 
that you can do things with. You can also go over to the formulas menu tab and the ribbon and you can insert a function from right here. You get the same panel. Or if you happen to know the kind of function you want, because maybe you're a person who works in the financial business, you might click here to the financial drop down and pick something out of here, and then it will open up the arguments that you can start typing in for the formula you want to create from the way the function is designed to work. Now, one of the easiest ways I just find is to use this right by the, um, the, the, the formula bar. That way I don't have to go look over here unless I really need to. What happens is it opens up the insert function panel and in here you can search for a function. Now, in the most cases, no one's going to really know what a lot of functions are called. You could type in something like multiply and then click go and see what you get. You'll get product, which is standard multiplication, some product, and a couple of other different things. You could come up here and you could say text, but I'm not sure what we'll get here. Okay, so we get a whole bunch of interesting things with text, but unless you know what most of these are for, you won't really, you know, they won't mean anything. But these are all functions that can use at least in part text. One we'll learn about later that's really fun is concatenate. Or, you know, you can um, look for a category for something recommended. So if you're not really sure what you want, maybe you could look for something that you used a couple of days ago that might be in most recently um, used. Or you know that you want to do something that is a text function, so you click here and you'll get a whole bunch of them to choose from. Or you know that it's going to be something that is related to date and time, like, you know, dividing, or excuse me, um, having a date and then subtracting another date from it to find out what the difference is. So you can look up things like that in here. And then you can choose a function. So if I were going to come in here and say, well, I want to look for the sum of something, I'll click here. Then I can double click sum. And then what happens is a function arguments panel will open up that I could put in information. And Excel tries to make this as helpful as possible. Basically, you could do a sum of like one number. So we'll do one and then two. And then guess what? It thinks, well, you know, you might want to actually do more numbers than that. So you actually could keep adding several more in here. So I'll add five in here. So it will be one plus two plus five. And it'll give you a little preview down here of what you should get if you're doing things correctly. So I'm going to hit OK, and there we go. I'm going to undo this, Control Z. But that's basically how the function um, boxes work. Now, a lot of really basic functions, you can simply learn to write by hand. So if it's not something that's for finances, like loan payments, or if it's not you know, something highly statistical, if it's not a logical V lookup, look this up from somewhere else and return this item you know, into this cell, you could do a lot of it by hand. But that's a little bit about how the formula making tools. Now let's look at the formula parts. Basically, formulas always start with an equal sign because essentially the cell needs to know what you're going to put in there, and it has to be the equal of some components that you're calculating. So it's always the equal sign. The equal sign is your best friend. So if you come over and you start typing in something like 2 times 3 and nothing happens, it's because Excel is looking at this as dummy text. It's not knowing that you want it to be a formula, so you need to make sure there's an equal sign. It's like, oh, oh, you want me to calculate me? Okay, that's great. I can do that. Formula parts also include constants. Constants would be like the numbers. So uh, a number would be like, you know, 2 plus 5, 3 times 8, 72 divided by 34. So the numbers are, are, are constants. However, formulas and functions can use cell references as well. So you might actually have a couple of cells with numbers in them, like E1 and F1 here. So you could actually, instead of typing equals 3 times 4, you could come down here and type in equals cell times cells, the contents of cell E1 uh, times the contents of cell F1, click it and you get the same answer. So you could do it either way. It's more efficient to do it with referencing the cell numbers 
So that way, if the cell information changes, it will be great. Or if you have a row of these, you could copy the formulas down and it will copy the information down relative to where it's getting it from. Now we're getting into something a little complicated. Whereas if I were to try to copy this formula down, I would get it a whole bunch of times or I wouldn't get anything at all. Okay, this is not sounding terribly intuitive at the moment, and we're not going to go any further there until we actually start working with some real formulas. But I wanted to mention it because um, relative to the location, we'll just say, okay, let's do a quick example. We've got two, or it's going to be got three, and we've got 78. These are two cells that are next to each other. And then we are going to put uh, 4 and 67, I'm going to do 5 and 58. Make sure they all use the same look here. Okay, so what I want to do here is do a sum of these two numbers. Equals this cell plus this cell and see what happens. There we go. We've got that. Let me make sure these are also the same size. 14, 16. Okay. Now, here's the thing. We can actually copy this formula down and paste it here. And you notice how the answers change. Why is that? Because this formula is referencing G13 plus H13. And they're relative cells, meaning that if you go to the next cell down here and look at the formula, it uses the same formula, but it replaces the contents of the cells with the cells that are in reference to it. So it isn't actually looking at cell G3 and H3. It's looking at cell G4 and H4. And that's because it tried to give you the sum of its own row, not the sum of the row above it. That's what relative means. It will make more sense as you start doing more of them. But a relative function or a relative formula means that you can copy and paste it down a column as long as there are other numbers in the column that are in reference to where the formula is being pasted. Now, there's a difference between that and something called absolute. The absolute is where the location never changes. So you may have something where you want to calculate items in a column against one specific tax rate. Well, the easiest thing might be, okay, I want to equal 78 times 0 0.085, and that's what the tax on it would be. But then I want to do equals 80 or 97 times 0.085, and there we go again. These are both using 0.085. The problem is you'd have to keep typing the 0.085 over and over and over again. So instead of doing that, what you would do is you'd put 085 into another cell, and you'd make it a, a and then in the formula, you could reference that cell as a stable location that isn't going to change no matter what number in a column is being multiplied against it. Again, that's going to make sense as you start working with it and seeing it in practice. But that's what this looks like. This is why you will see some references in Excel with these dollar signs before a cell address for a column and then the cell address for the row. You can also do mixed um, references where you actually have a relative number or a relative cell and then an absolute cell. You can also um, do it based on oh, something is interesting has happened here. I want to make sure that these, sorry, uh, I, I seem to have lost a little bit of my, uh, <laughs> There we go. I, want, I had some wrapped text here, so this would make a little bit more sense to folks. And then I closed up the cells, and that's not very good. So let's open that up. Okay. So anyway, relative cell, that's this. Absolute cell, this is this. Mixed reference and um, 
uh, a relative and absolute cell, this is this. You also can use a range reference where you actually refer to a range of data. You can use a named data range. And this is the name two cells. If I look up here, two cells happens to be these two cells. That's a named range. Right. So that could be in a formula. You could also reference an entire table in a formula. Say you're looking something up in the table and this would be, for instance, the name of the table. You could reference information on another sheet. So the formula would include the sheet name in it and then possibly the table name or the, the named range in it. And then one really useful trick that I didn't learn until I was on the job. Sometimes you create a formula and it's not quite working right and you're not sure why and you don't want to rewrite it. But every time you click away from the cell, it keeps telling you you're in error and it drives you up the wall. Here's how you stop that. You basically could put a little quote mark in it so that it deactivates the formula. Excel will not calculate with this. So for instance, right now I am, let's take a look over here in this cell, which happens to be cell B17. I have this little quote mark in here in front of a dash. So the reason why I have a quote mark in this cell is that when I first typed into the cell to put a dash in to sort of make this little area stand out here, Excel tried to translate it as part of a formula. Uh, even though there was no equal sign in there, but sometimes that can happen. Or uh, this over here, you notice that this formula has a little, in the formula bar, you can see this little sign here. That's to keep this from being actually um, active and, and doing a calculation. But that's a really useful tool to use. Okay, then I want to mention that another part of formulas are the operators, the things you're telling how to calculate. So in this case, this little star, in here is a multiplication uh, um, uh, operator. Um, if you do, you know, plus, minus, uh, uh, greater than, less than, division, that's what an operator is. And then precedence. The precedence simply means the order in which calculations will happen. So most commonly, um, if you have several calculations are going to happen in one cell, if you don't um, spread things out and put parentheses around them in order to kind of block off this chunk plus this chunk equals then whatever, you're going to have um, whatever uh, is, is multiplied first or divided first and then pluses. So you might have, you know, 5 plus 6 times 11 minus 8. Well, it would be doing the 5 times 11 before, or the 6 times 11 before adding the 5 and then adding the 8. So if you want to get the correct answer for what you want, you want to make sure that anything that you're multiplying, maybe you're putting inside of parentheses or anything you're adding, you're putting inside of parentheses, etc. So most of this will make more sense once you actually have some formulas to work with. We'll have another video where we get to do that. But this at least helps set you up for understanding what the formula bar is, what it does, how it's different from, um, you know, just typing inside of the cell, although you can do a formula in either place, how you can access the function library and build functions, and then how if you have created a formula and something goes wrong while you're in the formula bar, you can undo by, like, say, don't save this. So those are really useful tips for you. So I hope that this is uh, uh, useful information for you. Thank you.